Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and we are back today in Automation, the car company tycoon game in Akhana. And uh, we are playing with Vista Automotive, trying to um, line up a new set of cars for the 2000s, which are rapidly approaching. Oh no, we are already in there. And uh, yeah, I was just looking at the mini hopper and how shit it was. Now we have problems even selling it. They are only selling to Ahana because of the low safety and only Ahana has so low uh, minimum safety requirements that we actually can sell it there. In Ahana it sells really well and that's a good thing because otherwise we would be sitting on a stock of, what did we have, something like 200,000 of these, these shit cars? There's nothing in this mini hopper so uh, it's a tiny little off-roader and I think we are going to build a follow-up version to this one today. And I have a specific car in mind, but before we do that, I want to grab the new tech points that are on the way. And in order to do so, I just, I think I need to advance the, to about half year. Uh, so let's advance six months and check back. Okay, so here we are. Uh, the minimum hopper has been selling out quickly. 20,000 a month in Ahana. This is our go-to super cheapo car, which all Ahanans need to have. And the R&D looks like we are uh, 2008, let's check. Um, and here, yes, that's, that's good. We have more than half and this has already turned over. That's great. So let's check. And this one is checked as well. Okay, we have three more tech points to spend there, basically. That's all good. And let's see, do we want to increase this further? Yes, we do. Cool. So let's get into designing then. And what I have in mind for the new mini hopper is this. Yes, we are going to build ourselves a battleship. This has a <laughs> frontal area of 1.4 uh, square meters, effective front area of 1.4 square meters, at as massive as is. And that's before cooling, as we are going to put something uh, pretty big in the front here to, in order to drive this thing. Probably needs a tank engine. And for this one, definitely we are going with a ladder chassis because uh, that amps up the utility rating for this. Um, maybe going for steel and front transverse, double wishbone and... Oh yeah, of course we can only go with double, double wishbone there. And then, let's see, uh, this is not supposed to be anything that competes with the Taurus directly and we are still ha we still have to build a Taurus for the new season of cars uh, we are going with the coil here as well uh, so it's more towards off-road off-road heavy utility stuff and steel for this one it will be very very heavy a uh, cooling combined <laughs> cooling total of 1,600. Uh, no, we are not going to put a 3,000 horsepower engine in there. Uh, although that would be kind of fun to just to try it out, like how that would be a complete non non drivable car. Also here I'm going with uh, the all wheel drive setup. Although I'm wondering, maybe I should go with longitudinal instead. Uh, front longitudinal. Does this help anything here? This is still the same. Yeah, no, that's all good. Uh, let's go with the longitudinal option. And now we can go with longitudinal 4x4. Yeah, that will help. That's something we didn't do for the other car because we had a, another setup there, I think. Or did I just not see it? Um, anyway, the longitudinal 4x4 is the way to go. Uh, for maximum off-roadiness. And now for the engine. I think there's no way we can use anything less than a V8 for this monster. How about a um, 
10 liter V8. That does sound about right, doesn't it? Okay, so basically nothing fancy here. Uh, I don't know how much power this thing is going to make. Uh, let's see. Uh, a freeway and reverse flow, reverse flow, and uh, that's not much power. That's because of knock mainly. Uh, let's get rid of this. And there we have it. 460 horsepower. And we have slight problems here with the revs. Ouch. This thing doesn't want to rev that high. So maybe we do need to put some forged internals onto this one. Although that will be quite expensive for this car. But then again, I mean, why not? This is supposed to be for the ultimate uh, EPIN extension demographic. And, of course, the uh, heavy demographics and uh, the off-road premiums, utility, ultra premiums, and maybe even... Uh, maybe this even passes as some kind of muscle car because of the capacity. All right, so now for the rest of this build. Uh, yeah, let's put a decent gearbox in there. What? Okay, with this engine, it still just reaches 200 kilometers an hour. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, that's drag for you guys. Yes, lots of drag. And we put a manual locker inside. And run this thing on chunky off-road tires. Let's see how large we can go, this one. Oh yeah, 850. Uh, but now the tires look like balloons. Okay, this is much better. Yeah, yeah, let's go with this. And steel, and what do we have here? Vented discs. I think this thing will need four piston brakes and two piston in the rear. The off-road under tray. How heavy will this thing be? Oh, just 30 kilos. Well, that's not too much. And let's go three times the cooling once again. <laughs> three times the cooling is almost 1,000 kilowatts worth of cooling. That's uh, amazing. And seats in this massive thing. Uh, five? Maybe? Five, four, five? This will be super premium. Uh, we start out... Or oh, should we have just a version which is super basic again? Just as a troll version? Like with the, the, the cheapest 10 liter car there is. But uh, that version doesn't get power steering, you know. <laughs> the only person... Um, uh, that can actually handle this car would be some kind of uh, strongest man in the world from Finland because they are or Russia they are always uh, yeah they probably could lift this car too but yeah anyway so power steering anti-lock braking system we don't need this fancy shit and the only thing that doesn't get a penalty is the advanced safety so let's put this into it and just go to free that's good enough here plus seven and for this we go with uh, progressive gas mono and off-road yes these figures are rather impressive although drivability not so much 26.6 uh, and this isn't even too terrible what's going on and it can only turn at 48 kilometers an hour uh, roll angle is really really low um, so amp this up to maximum and the off-road value is is already through the roof so is utility practicality is through the roof as well uh, do we need something a little bit more well-tuned is the question no the uh, presets definitely can't handle this kind of beast uh, let me correct this a little bit all right, even without any sway bars, we are still doing pretty well. Roll angle 4.5. Uh, Off-road is decent enough. 
And I think for this one we could even go with something like an active... Ah, oh, no, we don't have the... Um... Ah, oh, that's, that's a bit overkill, I think. Even though it's better for the stats. I think that's too much overkill. Okay, final stats for the car are... Oh, well, final. For, for the base version. The, the very, very base version. Uh, just 23 liters 100 case, not too bad, and it weighs 2.6 tons. Considering how large it is, that is not too bad. But let's see, detailed stats, drivability, performance, nope, it doesn't have any kind of penalty towards its performance. That's very good. And here, oh, the overhang is what really kills it. Ah, that's too bad. Can we make it... Can we make a slightly smaller version? And there we go. So the smaller version uh, does get... Uh, no, basically the same thing. It's lighter, but it suffers in utility because of less cargo space. Gets better drivability. Um, safety goes down because lower weight and less crumple zones and then production units go down slightly total cost goes down because of lower material costs but overall this doesn't seem to be worth it we're losing pretty good stats overall so now i extend it back out again all right yes oh for drivability i i want to see what kind of footprint multiplier we are having that must be terrible Footprint minus 16.7%. I don't think I've ever seen a multiplier that bad for it. Uh, yeah. Not easy to park this thing. Oh, well, it kind of is, but only if you accept that you will you will kind of crush other cars. Then it is really easy to park it, because this, this monster doesn't care. But what about the brakes? Oh, the brakes are too good. And we did have a little bit of brake fade too. Do you need... Oh, this is already maximum size. Uh, do we need to up the pad type for this? Oh, now it's up to the front. So those need to be larger as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good for off-road as well. Um, 375s, both front and rear. Yes, off-road is really happy. Utility is happy. Safety is happy because the brakes are heavier and with that we transfer um, more energy towards the poor victim of ours instead of our car. But we do have a major, major problem and that's where all our drivability is going. Just look at this. That's not acceptable. <laughs> it's just so much wheel spin. There's so much wheel spin. What's going on here? 60% wheel spin. Are you kidding me? Alright, uh, but off-road is suffering like crazy if we put this up too much. So I think the only option here would be uh, to either go all-wheel drive, which we could do. Um, let's see how, how badly that impacts the off-road stat. So we have 71.8 here and now if we choose to go for all-wheel drive instead and just wiggle shortly and see what happens. Oh fuck okay the off-road really drops down but uh, the grip levels rise as well so that's decent. Does, does the engine even fit? Hello Dr. Engine, do you still fit? Yeah, it does. All right. Well, well. But this doesn't seem to be acceptable. The only option I can see from here then is that we go with something I try to avoid for as long as possible, and that's traction control. Yeah, that's a massive difference in drivability. I guess we have to bite the engineering time difference. Um, it, <laughs> the the little chip that is extra doesn't cost as much ten dollars in, in extra cost that's fair enough all right with a little bit of tinkering here i think i am oh that's another thing we could do 
Yes, yes, even more off-road. More utility. Brilliant. Okay, we got that down. Uh, now we need to make the springs softer. Oh, no, harder. Going in the wrong direction. Can make the rear springs softer instead. Okay, finally done. Uh, so the bare bones version stands. It's called the elephant. It's uh, just like the mini hopper, but one divided by the mini hopper. So it's exactly inverted. It's uh, massive, it's clunky, and the only thing that isn't inverted is its good off-road capability. So now let's see what kind of um, awesome stuff we can put into this one. Okay, so here we go. The only changes that I really need to do is... Oh no! Family name dropped. Um, anyway, the uh, changes are... I'm going to four seats, go for premium here so that I have a little bit more headroom so that I can make a handmade version. And luxury infotainment is not really on the table. And this one needs to be lowered by two. Yes, okay. Utility premium! They really love this thing. 135 competitiveness. Let's have a quick look at the market appeal here. Uh, yep, we are falling uh, plainly into the off-road premium category with this one. And with the bare bones version, let's take a good look here. We are doing pretty well in the heavy utility. That's that's exactly what I'm aiming for as well, like off-road and heavy utility. Uh, this one is far too budget for this one, but um, utility premium. That's looking very good. Yeah, I can I can appreciate this. So now we just need to make an over-the-top version of this one, and we shall call it the Ivory Edition and make it handmade. Uh, unfortunately, luxury infotainment is is not available. Uh, that's all good. This will be probably the most prestigious vehicle we ever make. Uh, this is just crazy. Could even put more quality into this. Wow, this actually helps quite a lot. But makes it super expensive. What? Oh, it's crazy. 82 drops to 77. Oh, this helps. This helps a lot. And makes it slightly less less ultra expensive. The brakes are oh, they are terrible. And what's going on there? Okay, I retuned it. The brakes are just beyond awful because I I get into brake fade instantly even though they are at their maximum size already. And I can't do much about the tire size. Could go up by one more, but that kills the off-road stat. So, not going to do this. And now, just for the lols, uh, I'm going to make a quick turbo version of this motor and uh, see what this ivory edition can pump out in um, top speed, considering it's massive frontal area. All right, I think this will be uh, just adequate for for this engine. Uh, uh, we bumped up the, the performance a little bit, just tripled it with a uh, small turbo. Uh, it's definitely not too large because we couldn't make it larger. It was, we had to use a little bit better quality interior though, because this engine is a, basically a house. We try to put a house into a slightly larger house and uh, yeah, that kind of works. Um, yeah, exhaust diameter is just as large as we can go. And let's see how the car performs. Whoops. That is not all that good, is it? We are working on the clone version, so I can just change things around a little bit. Oh, we can't have wider tires than this either. So if we uh, change this to semi-slicks, that doesn't even help anything. Oh, wow, that's, that's terrible. 
All right, on 28 inch rims, we uh, do get a decent performance out of this one. Uh, how quick can we go? That's the question. Oh shit, look at this, my eyes hurt. <laughs> oh no, oh no, help me. Ah, uh, worst Turk, t Turk, Turk curve. <laughs> this is the Turkish curve. Uh, in uh, impossible in automation. Let's see how fast we can go. Oh yeah, uh, that's pretty pretty good. We just use about 80 liters, 100 k's, and still have the same wheel spin as before. <laughs> same shit, but we can reduce it slightly, I think. Yeah, down to 54 percent. It's almost acceptable. Uh, sportiness is coming up. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is perfect. Oh, we are having a few problems here. Ah, uh, yep, the brakes certainly aren't enough. <laughs> the roll angle <laughs> of 7.7. .7. Uh, maybe this needs a little bit more strength. It's better, but still terrible. Uh, 400 for this one. Yeah, yeah, we're now getting into a range that is somewhat acceptable. But yeah, as you can see, this is not... Uh... Oh, shit! Look at this! These tires, aren't they magnificent? Um, yeah. This, this car is a little bit strange. And it sells into... Uh, <laughs> basically two markets. <laughs> oh shit. The Elephant Ivory Edition Madhouse uh, trim. So, if we put it on the test track, will it crash the game? That's the question. Let me save the game first, because this might just be a little bit too crazy. Alright, there we go. So, test track. Uh, airfield track. I, I don't think this will be fast around it. Uh, no, no chance, but let's, let's take a, a look here. And we have a 127.5. So, uh, guys, here you see the reason why you you don't want to design the ultimate muscle cars. <clears throat> because they kind of suck on the track as well. Uh, but they, they are fun. Uh, I, I have to give it that. So, uh, yeah. How about we delete this one? I think that's in order. Okay. Back to normal. Back in normal land, even though this is, this is absolutely terrible. Um, so much for that. I think we are done here. And let's go towards engineering. Oh, this is all good. Uh, nice reliability on this one. Let's put in five years of time. And we use the Mini Hopper factory. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Uh... The engines seem to be somewhat difficult to build. Um, uh, we need to change sizes around a little bit. So if we shrink this one, even get money back. And how, how does how does it look then? That's two shifts. That's 1.8. Oh yeah, that's much better. I don't think we need this massive amount of production there. Uh, this might be complete overkill for this kind of car. Although we could try it and then just shut down production if we really wanted to. We do have the money, so it's a little bit of a risk, but a risk at 74 billion in the bank isn't really a big risk, is it? So let's go for two and three, and that should be basically the same. Oh no, it's even worse. We can go with a 2-2 two -two if we want to. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so size two overall. And now we shall see how this selling into those categories goes. Uh, I need to adjust prices. The bare bones edition looks like it's it does want to sell a lot. Uh, the luxury edition uh, we probably need to sell more bare bones editions. Ivory edition is pretty cool, but oh, this one is locked. Right. 
something like this to start out with, maybe. And now let's see the markups. Uh, probably around... Uh, this one just gets like 30-40%. And the Ivory Edition we sell at 110. Okay. <laughs> uh, 16 months until break even for this one. And it's a 3 billion dollar project. Now let's sign off of, on this one. And in the next episode, now that we have the new mini hopper in production or in engineering, I think we need to jump onto the Family 95 uh, and have a replacement ready for this one. And after that would be the Pico, I guess. And last, the uh, Family Utility or something. And the Taurus, because the Taurus can, uh, it can stay on the market for a little longer. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time!